Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. And yes, I'm on, in a different place space today. I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Emily Canote. She is our intern from the Presbyterian of Southern Kansas, and she is a PTS, or Princeton Theological Seminary student. And she will be giving us the message later today. So um, I am the lay leader who I get to see things from my opposite side than I normally get to see things. I kick the choirs over there and everything. So it's a little different for me also. I have a couple of announcements. The first is um, that on um, this Thursday, we will not be doing the I've Been, I've been Meaning to Ask uh, Bible study at uh, noon or at five. We will not. And um, Next Sunday, August 20th, we'll have a harvest celebration. Um, and on the last Sunday, which is August 27th, we will be doing a camp t-shirt day. So if you have your t-shirts, your Garden City Presbyterian Church t-shirts, wear them. Let's just, let's just be comfortable. Okay, and that's on August 27th. And I'm going to ask, um, if you do not have t-shirts, Joanne, Joanne, okay. <laughs> Is it uh, Berta's who has them, the t-shirt thing? Who has the? Yeah. Yeah, Berta's. So if you want a t-shirt, you go ahead. Um, all you have to do is go down there and say that you need a Presbyterian church t-shirt, and they should be able to print one for you. Because they have it all set up. They just need to squirt the paint on it. Okay? Pearls, not pearls. 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 Sorry. Pearls. I didn't know which one. That's why I asked. Well, it's the one that's over by the ESC office. So. Pearls. Sorry. Birdies okay. is flowers. Birdies is flowers. Yes. Thank you. Pearls. Okay. Pearls. Yes, okay. Are there any other announcements? Uh, I do have one. So I, I, I have a, a itty bitty complaint. So whoever yesterday came in and brought things for Remy Cell dropped a glass outside that I cleaned up this morning. So if you are bringing things in to the church and you drop and break something, clean it up. <laughs> That's my only little thing, just clean it up. But I just happened to see it when I came in this morning and uh, I got it up. So if you were planning on coming this morning and cleaning it up, it's already done. That's all. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Ron. Well, you already beat me to the punch a little bit, but apparently I've been nominated to announce Summer Harvest Celebration Potluck Dinner and Birthday Party next Sunday, the 20th, 6.30 to 8, here, of course, in the Fellowship Hall. Um, we've invited the city administration, the fire department, the water department, uh, so we should pretend we like them when they come. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're going to celebrate the 70th birthday of the Garden City Garden Club, you know, for our, our garden here. It was started, okay, we can all laugh a little bit, I was supposed to say ho, 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 like garden. Um, it was started in 1953, and even though I didn't live here, I was two years old and I remember it. Um, <laughs> another ho, ho, ho. So, but uh, anyway, it, it, this will be next Sunday, and it really seems like a good time. It's, it's amazing to think we've kept a garden here for 50 years, and we're still trying to get a plant to grow. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Let us worship God. God speaks peace to the faithful, to those who turn to God in their hearts. Salvation is at hand for those who fear God. 
Where God dwells, steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs out from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. God gives what is good, and we respond with abundant praises. Okay, our choir. Holy God, you speak to us in a voice unexpected and come to us in ways we do not recognize, never leaving us to our own devices or defenses. You are the ever-present, all-powerful God. Call us out in faith again and again until we learn to walk with you in steadfast love and faithfulness and in peace. In the name of him who comes to us upon the waters, Jesus the Christ, amen. Please stand as you're able and join us in uh, hymn number 250. In the bulb there is a flower. It's in your red glory to God hymnal and on the PowerPoint. Our call to confession, God makes no distinctions among us, 
The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous. Indeed, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Confessing our sins, we depend on God's generosity and grace. Gracious God, you call us to step out in faith, trusting in you for all things. We respond to your command, but then sink in doubt and fear. We hide from the challenges of bold discipleship. We are not able to fulfill your commandments, for our purposes are never in full accord with yours. Forgive us, we pray. But do not believe in our hearts. Help us to practice all circumstances. Lift us out of sin into the arms of your mercy. Though we are distracted by noise all around, allow us to hear your voice, even when it is the sound of sheer silence. Please take a moment of silence. Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the dead and we are saved through him. This is the good news that we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. This is good news to share with all people. Thanks be to God. So may the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us take a moment to stand and greet one another with the sign of peace by turning and waving to one another and on the recording. And um, don't forget, we can do the fist bumps and the elbow bumps and the waves. And yes, don't forget Emily over there. Hello. <laughs> and um, please remain standing as we sing our hymn of forgiveness.
this morning we say it says remember the wonderful works God has done and our verses are from Psalms 105 1 to 6 16 to 22 and 45 B so it happens to say this give thanks to the Lord call on his name make known among the nations what he has done sing to him sing praises to him Tell of his wonderful acts. We're going to run us out. That judgment morning, it talks about their glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look at to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and judgments he has pronounced. And then it skips to 16. He called down famine on the land and destroyed all their suppliers of food and he sent a man before them Joseph sold as a slave they bruised his feet with shackles his neck was put in irons till he was foretold came to pass till the world to till the word of the Lord pro proved him true the king sent and released him the rulers of the people set him free he made him master of the household and ruler of all of his he possessed to instruct his princes, and he pleased the teachers, his elders, and wisdom. And the last verse is 45b. Praise the Lord. I like that one. Praise the Lord. This psalm that we read today is a psalm of thanksgiving. And what does thanksgiving mean? Huh? To be thankful. To be grateful for it. Everything. Can we even be grateful when God sends a famine? Sure we can. Because what happens in famine? You lose weight. Well, I would be thankful for that, yeah. Well, but we turn to the Lord, and we can remember all the great things that he has done and will do for us, because he promises to be with us all. This morning in Sunday school, we talked about the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's with us all the time. Um, the Psalms urges others to remember and take comfort in all the times God has shown it and delivered God's people. And like God did a famine, Joseph and his rise to power in Egypt after being sold as a slave. You can't think of being sold as a slave something good, but did Joseph do good things after that? Yes, he did. These stories remind us God is also with us whatever we face. And we want to have a small prayer today. Would you pray with me? Powerful God. Powerful God. Thank you for all. Thank you for all. The many wonderful works. The many wonderful works. You have done. You have done. And all the times. All the times. You have helped your people. You have helped your people. Through the hard things. Through the hard things. Help us remember you. Are present, are present with us too. This 
especially in the hard times. Amen. Let's all stand and join in the hymn singing, There's a Wildness in God's Mercy, 435. Our prayer of illumination. Gracious God, we listen for you in wind, earthquake, and fire. Unexpectedly, you speak in the sound of silence. We pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will silence in us all the storms, doubts, and fears that overwhelm so that we may hear what you have to say. Your still small voice. Thin, quiet, yet compelling, commanding all the same. We ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. I would like to introduce to you our guest, Emily Cano. I'm trying to remember how to say her last name correctly, but she will be doing our reading and um, giving us our message for today. Thank you. Good morning. I felt like I was hiding back there, and now I get to pop up and say hello. Our text today comes from 1 Kings 19, 9 through 18. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, well, I want to wait till my friends come in, actually. I didn't realize everyone's still... No, it's okay. You don't have to run. You don't have to run. It's okay. Good morning. I didn't want to leave anyone out. That's always the worst when you get left out. Okay. This is the word of the Lord. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, 
I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Tazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall announce Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel, oh, hold on, Abel Mohola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha, shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of God for the people of God. <sighs> okay, you'll have to excuse the folks who put together the Revised Common Lectionary. That was a long one today. But that's partially because we're kind of walking in in the middle of a story. So I'm going to give you the background really quickly. And then I have a fantastic Presbyterian joke for you I think you're going to like. Dr. Lovelace, a professor of Hebrew Bible, summarizes the background to the story nicely. She reports that there had been a three-year drought in Israel because Ahab, the king of Israel, had forsaken God's commandments and followed the gods of his wife, Jezebel, the Baals. Elijah had engaged in a contest with the prophets of Baal and Asherah to demonstrate to the people that the god of the Israelites, Yahweh, was God. Elijah prevails over the prophets of Asherah and Baal and has them killed. God restores the rains in the land following Elijah's defeat of the prophets. And then Ahab reported to Jezebel all that Elijah did. And then she swears she's going to take Elijah's life. Yikes. So he feared Jezebel would follow through on this threat, and he fled to Horeb, the mount of God which is where we find him in our text today. Okay, that's all the background you need. Are you ready for my joke? Okay. So there's a joke about Presbyterians that goes like this. There was once a man visiting a Presbyterian congregation, and he went in, and during worship, he said, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. An older woman, a veteran of the congregation, who was sitting in the back, yelled back to him, no, don't worry, that's just our AC kicking on. <laughs> a good one, right? When reading our text today, I often think about that joke, because First Kings is talking about Elijah discerning the Holy Spirit, something that Presbyterians aren't always too good at. The text tells us that Elijah found God, or the Spirit of God, in the silence. It says there was a great wind. It was splitting mountains, breaking rocks, and God wasn't in it. There was an earthquake, and God wasn't in it. There was a fire, and God was not in it. After the fire was the sound of sheer silence. 1 Kings 19 is a chapter that has long fascinated biblical interpreters. The text describes a stone-shattering wind, an earthquake, and a fire, and it ends with the famously anticlimactic sound of silence, or still small voice, depending on which translation you're reading. Both are viable translations. Regardless, though, Elijah is discerning, and discernment is about seeing and sensing difference. Elijah is able to discern God in the difference, the quiet, the silence, against the backdrop of every worldly chaos you could possibly imagine. When was the last time you had true silence? Silence that would allow you to hear the still, small voice of God. Not silence that happens on accident but purposeful silence. In the Quaker tradition, do we have any former Quakers here? Each Sunday they meet, they sit in silence together for one hour. That's their service. Yeah. One of their Quaker websites quotes William Penn, 
a famous early Quaker, and it says, true silence is the rest of the mind and is to the spirit what sleep is to the body. Nourishment and refreshment. I love that. The goal of this silence is to make ourselves more receptive to divine revelation. Think of it like a dimmer switch on a light bulb, they say. When you turn up the silence, so to speak, you increase the potential of connecting with the presence of God. Now, I'm not here to convert anyone to Quakerism today. But I do think they may be onto something here. One wonders what would happen in the silence, especially when we receive so little of it, and when God is known to show up in it. Often we avoid silence because it can make us uncomfortable. We're so used to constant stimulation that we become filled with unease when a moment for silence presents itself. We feel like we're doing something wrong or we need to fill it to make others more comfortable. But what if we allowed it? What if we embraced it? What would happen? If you're beginning to become filled with fear or your heart is beating quickly in your chest and you're thinking to yourself, Oh my goodness, this 20-something-year-old girl is about to make us sit in silence for an hour. I'm not. Don't worry. You can breathe. <laughs> but I thought we could try a fraction of that. Just two minutes together. Not expectant on anything. Not forcing anything to happen. Not looking for an earthquake, a fire, a flood. But just being with one another and with God. But before we begin our two minutes, I thought I'd have to pull out my phone, but there's a lovely clock right here, so that worked out so well. Before we begin our two minutes, I'd like to read you a poem, and it just goes so well with this passage today. It's entitled, Let Your God Love You. It's written by a Christian poet named Edwina Gately. So I'd like you to humor me and close your eyes for a moment. And I'm going to read the poem to you. We'll have our two minutes of silence together. This poem is called, Let Your God Love You, by Edwina Gately. Be silent. Be still. Alone. Empty. Before your God, say nothing. Ask nothing. Be silent. Be still. Let your God look upon you. That is all. God knows. God understands, God loves you with an enormous love and only wants to look upon you with that love. Quiet, still, be. Let your God love you.
You can open your eyes. Elijah allowed his God, which is our God, to love him by listening for the silence and encountering God in it. He allowed his God to gaze upon him with love. It can be uncomfortable. Did that feel kind of weird at first? Do you like a thumbs up, a medium thumbs, a thumbs down? Yeah? But as you go out into the world this week, when you find yourself wondering where God is, if you're anything like me, that's at least four times a day, especially when I'm stuck in like a Hobby Lobby parking lot rage. I'm like, where's God in this? Or if you're listening for the Holy Spirit to speak to you sometime this week, I hope you can take a cue from Elijah and from Edwina, the poet. I hope you can let your God love you by being still and silent before your God. In that stillness and silence, the scriptures tell us that we will find the Spirit of God gazing upon us, waiting to speak. Amen. Thank you, Emily, for that practice of silence. And you're right, we don't do that often enough. So uh, please join me uh, with our affirmation of faith. With Jesus Christ as our head, we aspire to be a church home and family, visible and open to all in the community, where people come to be welcomed, included, loved, and nurtured where people come to quench their spiritual thirst. We worship together to glorify God by offering meaningful spiritual experiences for people of all ages. Teach the gospel in such a way that it provides a sense of hope, meaning, and direction for people's lives. Care and pray for one another as we experience life's challenges. Equip people to use their spiritual gifts in ministry. Share our abundance as we reach out in service to our community and the world. Offer true hospitality to all, seeking to know them and their needs. It is now our time for our offering. So because God cares for all without distinction and is generous to all beyond measure, so we, God's people, are to care for all with generosity and gladness. We bring our offerings to be used for God's good purposes in the church and in the world. Um, we do accept offerings by uh, in person here today, or if you come into the office during the week, um, checks, money orders, um, ACH debits. Uh, we use PayPal also so there's a variety of different ways and um, you can go to our website and click on um, one of the offering tab buttons there please stand as we sing our doxology praise to god the father Generous God, we thank you for your call and claim upon our lives because there is so much more we can become and so much more we can do. We pray that our faith will increase, that our practice of generosity will be enlarged, and that our joy in believing will encourage others as we share with them the good news 
of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. God of power and love, you are with us in every circumstance of this life. We thank you for your steadfast faithfulness. We thank you for the gift of your peace, which comes to us even in times of chaos and fear, trouble and doubt. We thank you for your powerful arms of mercy that grasp us when we are sinking, for your powerful world that coaxes us even when we are hiding and afraid. 
We put our trust in you, for you alone can save us. We ask for your power and love to overwhelm the chaos of the nations. In every place of war, send your encompassing shalom. Your income, hold on, hold, hold. that word is throwing me. Your encompassing shalom, I have to, I'm sorry. To restore and repair all that is torn and broken. We pray that violent and hostile struggles will be defeated by good. Give us faith and courage to follow Christ so closely that divisions are dismantled, reconciliation is accomplished, and love casts out all fear. Increase mutual understanding and a sense of unity in our community, in this congregation, in the church, and around the world. In our personal relationships, bring healing where there is estrangement and hurt. We entrust to your providence and care all those who suffer, all those on this table, all who are hiding from you, from others or even from themselves because of fear or feelings of unworthiness. To one struggling with doubt, increase faith. To one enduring persecution or prejudice, bring freedom. You alone can save us, almighty God. Hear our cries to you, we pray. Gather us up and set us in safety and we will praise your name. We ask all things in the name of Jesus Christ, as together we pray the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can we stand and sing our closing hymn? May the God of hope go with us. some congregational happenings after service that I would love to invite a deacon to come pray for before I give the charge and benediction, if anyone would be willing. <laughs> Tag, you're it. Would you all pray with me? Holy God, we come before you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit to give thanks for this time to join together as a church family, to hear a word of inspiration from our visitor, Emily. And I just ask that we would continue in that fellowship um, in a shared meal. Please bless the food, bless those who prepared it, and just bless the connections and conversations that happen around that shared meal. And keep us all in bonds of love until we come together again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I keep thinking about the prayer of confession. Did you write it, Doris? It's perfect. I'm thinking of the last lines where it says, Though we are distracted by noise all around, allow us to hear your voice even when it is the sound of sheer silence. 
I hope as you go out into the world this week and you encounter silence, and maybe you encounter God in that silence, that you allow God to love you in that silence. Allow your God to gaze upon you with so much love as God speaks to you. Go in peace. Thank you.